what are your specific challenges to working from home? Uh, interestingly, the majority felt there is no particular challenge, but there are a lot of minor to moderate challenges or irritations, okay? And that's uh, some people uh, feeling lonely, staying motivated, being distracted at home, and, and trying to take time off. And personally, I can relate to all uh, four of those, uh, taking time off not being so important for me, but the distractions being a huge irritation. I would mark them as blue, um, which is why I always come to the office. Um, then we, we ask questions around working in virtual teams, uh, and it appears that data and technology also represent minor issues or sort of background, background noise and irritation, uh, particularly around data and connectivity. Um, we again, we have to have yet one large virtual team meeting where everyone remains on the line. Um, we are now also contending with ESCOM and uh, so patchy cell C coverage and ESCOM just adds to our woes. Uh, the technology and platforms, uh, yes, we've had close to 100 days of practicing that. And as you could see, um, I I'm still not proficient. So it does rep it represents an ongoing minor challenge. And then communication and collaboration, obviously that that is an ongoing issue. And that really is also going to form part of today's conversation. Uh, then we then we ask questions around leading virtual teams. So if you're if you're uh, managing a team, uh, there were no major issues, but again, sort of minor to moderate challenges, and some even mentioned as major challenges, that um, there's a lack of training or knowledge of how to effectively manage or lead virtual teams and uh, the technology might not be there or available or easily understood or we don't have sufficient experience so there's there was a there was a minority that that considered this a major challenge and the majority found it sort of ongoing moderate to minor prob problematic okay and then very specific issues around leading uh, virtual teams is around distance cohesion engagement and managing outcomes and again, I think this is going to be the conversation of, of, of the next uh, hour is around overcoming the distance and building a culture that's conducive to you know, cohesion and uh, productivity and then particularly managing outputs and, and, and getting to your milestones. So uh, quite, a, quite a lot of people there say it's a minor to moderate challenge and a significant number found a major challenge. And I personally, again, can relate to all of those. So let me introduce our presenter, Johan Ersthausen. He's a seasoned facilitator and leadership coach. He's done this for, I think, three decades. We, we have the huge privilege and honor of, of having Johan on our, in our group of facilitators. And he's, he, he's managed uh, sort of large cohorts of up to 200 uh, graduates uh, more recently in, in and coach them in general management uh, and our students love Johan. He's he's a seasoned HR L&D uh, specialist and he understands organizational design very well and he operates at sea level but then right th throughout the organization. So uh, what's refreshing about Johan is that he, he's not only dealing in the rarefied atmosphere of, of senior managers, but can really uh, get down to a granular level and he understands the issues at all levels of the organization. Okay, and he's got good cross uh, industry expertise. You can see a list of his clients, uh, I mean, notably blue chip, blue chip clients. And um, in terms of qualifications, he, he has a master's degree in industrial psychology and he's a, a coaching practitioner, CPA practitioner, and a, and a registered OPQ practitioner. Sorry, I forgot what the latter abbreviation means. Uh, and he's an assessment and change specialist. So um, I think his, his, his um, expertise and passion lies in harnessing and leveraging uh, the younger generation's know-how and, and building that into organizations so that organizations become sustainable uh, going forward into the future. So Johan, I'm going to hand over to you now, and uh, we look forward to the next uh, 40 minutes, and hopefully we'll have some time to answer some questions from the audience thereafter. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, and Ty, thank you for that um, sure, interesting introduction. 
Um, thanks for, for, for <laughs> that really um, puts the pressure well, on. Did I, did I, I hope I introduced the right person. <laughs> I, I was wondering for a moment there to say, yo, who is this guy talking about? Eh? <laughs> but thanks, Guy. And, and thanks again for the opportunity. Um, uh, this, uh, thanks for Novia One and, and Renette and Ty and Marilyn, all those guys that really sets up these sessions um, to engage with, with our clients. Um, and then this is a topic that, that um, I really enjoy. Uh, and, and today I'm just going to run through some of our, our learnings over the past couple of months. Um, I'm in no way going to try and uh, make myself out as an expert in terms of this. I think we were thrown into this, um, this whole virtual working scenario. Um, over the past three to four months, it really became quite a big thing. And we work with some clients out there that's really struggling with this, people that's evolving around this. And today I'm going to just share some of our learnings around that. There's, there's some great research out there going on at the moment that I, I really um, encourage you to go go um, have a look at those. But um, I'm going to share some learnings in terms of what I personally found while working with executives, while working with team leaders, uh, supervisors, in terms of leading teams virtually in this new challenge. And uh, I think we have to admit there was a time, frankly, it was easier to be a, a leader in a, in a business. Um, your team, no matter how big they was, was located at least in one place. It was often in one building. Um, people, and people did different personalities and they had different skill sets and um, they spoke even the same language. I mean, we had a business language. Um, we had on the same schedules. I think we worked on the same schedules. That helped us to just control the things a little bit better. You could pop into somebody's office. Um, you could uh, just uh, get somebody around, see what they're doing. You look out of your window, look around the room and you can see how people and uh, that changed significantly. Um, we did face challenges. I think we have to admit that. But it's nothing compared to, I think, what, what COVID and, and what the new world of work is, is putting onto us. And then I'm not even talking about what, what the electricity situation is adding to us in terms of virtual working. Um, and that just adds to this whole pressure and this whole stress that we're under. Um, I believe there's still a lot to learn um, around working virtually. Um, I, I, I'm, I think we're at the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of where we need to go. We're going to have a lot of insights going forward, going forward still. Um, and I, I believe uh, this, uh, the things that I'm going to share with you today will probably, not everything will be new. Some will be a reminder, a refresher. And, um, but I would like at the end, um, just talk to you about a new concept that I recently found. Um, that's around learning agility. And I think that's a concept that as leaders of leading virtual teams, we can really start just looking at. And on the slide, when I get to it, the sources there from HFM Talent Index, um, this whole thing, and just understanding that because it helps you as a leader just to get your head around the individuals working for you. So let's move on. So I think we all know when our employees are in the office, we're human beings. Um, we, we, we engage. Yeah? We engage on, on a daily basis. We feel truly connected. Um, you know, um, we, we're having a conversation quickly with a, with, with a, with a colleague. Um, having lunch, a water cooler session, just chatting to people, people you can see and engage with, that's human nature. And, and I think that is something that um, when we are in the office, we truly, fully, feel truly engaged. And, and people at this stage, because of social distancing, because of remote work, because of pressures and even fears, I mean, let's, let's face it, our employees and ourselves are a bit scared in terms of what could happen and how this thing is going to spread. And, and, and because of this, our conversations in terms of now making us feeling connected is not happening. And, 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 that can, and, and because of that, employee, employees start feeling disconnected. Um, if you just work on a laptop, you just work on a computer, on the phone, you don't have that interaction with, with your colleagues, there's a, there's a bit of loss that comes in. And I think for leaders, that is for me one of the key things that I'm picking up that leaders, leaders are struggling with in terms of how do I get people to feel connected? How do I make sure that they are part of, 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 of this team and of the culture that I'm trying to create? And the pandemic is completely redefining the way we work, the way we communicate. Um, and, and, and I think we, we dabbled in remote work a little bit over the past years. Uh, people working away from office maybe one day a week, two days a week. Some people were a bit more. But in essence, you always came back to the office two or three days a week for a meeting or a team building. And I think this, the, the pandemic and that pushed us into this new norm. 
this this thing recalls a new reality and and i think organizations need to start adjusting on the fly um, i've worked with organizations that had to re-equip their employees within 10 days in terms of laptops wi-fi um, getting their leaders up sorting out uh, cyber security I, I mean all of you know what what, what, what the challenges are um, and i think there's a lot of studies out there. The one I like is Gartner that says they re, re, their recent research says about 88% of organizations are now encouraging all their employees to work from home. And, and I know there's a certain amount that cannot, but a lot of people are working from home. And people are really struggling uh, in terms of this. A smooth transition, if I'm working at the office, working, uh, want to need work remote, takes up to 12 weeks. Um, and, and, and usually we like to give people a smooth transition. We weren't allowed that. Um, so people are struggling to, to adapt and to transition to this new world of work. And we need to sort out the rules. But I think what we need to realize, uh, we have to be cautious. Um, I think we all know with, with the current situation, this situation is gonna be going on for quite a while still. Um, I think we uh, probably your entire team, big parts of our teams are still gonna be working remotely well into the, into the new year. I've worked with a client this week that have already decided for the employees to work remotely until March next year as a minimum. And we're talking a big uh, insurance company. Um, so the organization is already preparing them for that. And people are already saying, but how do I cope with this? And how do I deal with this? And how do I go on with this? So I want to, so that's, I think that's, that's a bit of an intro in terms of this. But I think we have to be honest. Um, there's some advantages to working remotely. Um, Commuting, I, I really not, don't miss the everyday commute to Joburg, two hours in a car, two hours back, um, problems on the highway. Um, I'm saving costs on fuel. Our, our, our people are having lower expenses. Uh, they say people are more productive when they work remotely, about 13%. I think that Stanford made that, um, that, that um, in research recently available. Um, I think that the, the new generations, your millennials, your, your Gen Zs, they like working remotely. I think they like the freedom. Um, and I think going forward, as they come into organizations and become taking leadership roles, they probably will be adapting a little bit easier. Um, flexibility is nice. If you get the results you want from an individual, I think you should be comfortable that people can manage their own schedule. We do get people that's better early in the morning. Some people are night owls. And then some people that just work the whole day. Um, I recently worked uh, with a leader that, that shared an interesting topic with me, a comment with me. He said, you know, I'm not working from home anymore. I'm actually sleeping at the office. And, and I think that's a mindset that, 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 that we are creating in terms of but the work and home is now becoming one. And we have to, have to look at those type of things. Um, in essence, I say people are less absent. Um, I know of people sitting on the video and on the calls um, not feeling well but they still come on board where they would, probably would not have gone to the office. So there is some advantages. 